Welcome to this video, playing a 15 minute game against Max Power from Denmark. I've played him recently. I think I, I won the game, but I don't remember really how it went down. What game was that? Let me just check this. He does not, I'm just uh, I'm curious. Let me check my own history. Yeah, I only played him recently. It was with black, a game with black. I cannot examine a game while I play. Now this makes some sense, actually. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, ah, this was a Blumenfeld Gambit. Yeah, I remember. This was this crazy Blumenfeld Gambit game. Okay, so here we got a Slav defense. I played the Queen B3 line. A line that I can recommend to white players. It's not this this line. It is not um, some miracle weapon that will win you all games, but um, it has one uh, very um, important point. It's not a very theoretically intense line, and you still can get a little bit of something here and there. So um, it's a good practical choice, not uh, needing much time to prepare. And uh, still you can do something. Very often the trade-off is you play um, a less work heavy uh, opening repertoire. Very often you um, have the problem that you get very often stale positions or positions that really don't uh, allow for much active play, or you get positions that are active but are bad. There is this very often the thing that is happening. So uh, it's, it's very um, it's very difficult at times to find opening lines that sort of offer a good balance between still being able to do a bit of something and, and put some pressure here and there, but still not. Um, demanding uh, so much um, of a workload and this um, if, if you look for a line against the Slav this is quite a good choice I believe this Queen b3 or Queen c2 here is uh, very uh, very similar okay let's see what he's doing this e3 Queen e2 this is a prophylactic approach the Queen on c4 is sometimes exposed to moves like b5 and c5 and um, I basically go away from the center before those moves can even hit me. If he goes c5 now, for example, white can play rook d1 and after the capture take with the knight, opening up the diagonal. This is in fact black's um, general issue that he needs to address. My bishop on g2 can very often become a very strong piece, very much comparable to the Catalan. If black plays c5 or e5, well e5 not so much, but c5 um, at the at the wrong moment. Yeah, this is very often a good idea, pushing the a-pawn. The idea being to play queen b6, a6. Okay, knight c3, he maybe plays knight e4. Hmm. Which is not uh, terribly great for black, but... If he gets to exchange um, some material, it's probably he probably helpful. So I'm not going to do this right away. Yeah, he might go for queen a6 really, but I don't um, need to trade. Of course, I can move the queen. I wonder. Hmm. Knight c2, knight e4. I didn't, I didn't, I uh, actually had this recently in a game. Knight e4, knight takes, bishop takes, knight e5, bishop g2, knight e7. This idea, I think I had this, and it nets me the bishop pair, right? Yep, I had this, I think, in a game against Richard Jones, wasn't it? Another 15 minute game. A while ago. 
I had this this exact position or this particular motif. Okay, while it is nice to have gained the bishop pair here, it does not mean I'm winning the game automatically because black is still having an, an absolutely solid structure, which is quite uh, difficult to, to break down. So it's uh, far too early to, to celebrate things here. <laughs> okay, he can still play maybe e5 at the right moment. C5 will always always open up the long diagonal. This, this does not look right to me. Hmm. Yeah. How to place pieces here? He might play a4. Yeah, I probably need to retreat this anyway because it can always be hit by knight f6 or something. And I'm not I'm not sure yet how to how to um, set up my other pieces. Hmm. A bishop like uh, a bishop like a move like bishop d2 for example he might simply answer with bishop b4 and if we trade dark squared bishop it's dark squared bishops um, it's pretty much clear that I don't uh, don't have anything I wonder if I should actually what about e4 here by the way e4 bishop e3 e4, bishop f6, bishop e3. This is not bad. Okay, come on. If he plays queen a6, I probably play queen c2, avoiding the trade. And this basically renders um, queen a6 useless. Or at least really not, uh, not having much point. Bishop, ah, interesting. This I didn't really expect. Yeah, but it's not, not uh, bad. Mm, yeah, if I play d5, my bishop here is in danger of becoming a, a somewhat, somewhat bad piece. Hmm, very interesting. So I probably should take it, right? Takes, knight takes, and then bishop somewhere, bishop f4, probably. Hmm, yeah, bishop e3, there is just bishop c5, this does not help at all. Hmm. Yeah, still a very, very solid position for black. Here, here we can, um, yeah, yeah, this is a possibility, or bishop uh, f6 was also, was also, um, also possible. Mm, yeah. Very tough now to avoid further trades. Yep. Yeah, we get this this configuration queen queen and knight against queen and bishop, which notoriously which uh, notoriously is uh, said to be good for queen and uh, queen and knight. There is some point to that. It's not a, it's not a complete um, complete fairy tale. This this uh, this um, this thing. But um, still, here there are also rooks on the board, and I'm a bit 
I'm a bit quicker in terms of the D file. Note that an endgame without heavy pieces, just bishop against knight, would be quite nice for white as uh, something like f4, yeah, gaining space, and then bishop h3, c8, activating the bishop. This would be very nice for white, this endgame. So um, black black must be careful with, with trading. Okay, the knight is aiming for those squares. Should I go to h3? Hmm. Yeah, I can play this first, actually. There's no reason not to. I thought that bishop h3, knight d4, queen e3 would be very nice now. Isn't that good? Okay, he can no, he cannot move the bishop. Uh, he cannot move the knight. Okay, no, no use in spending much more time here. This looks like the right move anyway. So knight d4, queen e3 should just win it, I think. Knight g5, I take d8. So I actually expect him to take on d2. Rook takes, queen takes, rook d8, that's queen d8, winning. If he takes, queen takes, knight g5, okay, I just drop back to g2, and I still control the d file. Hmm, sure. That's just, just, that's just a, a position that is slightly better for white. There is no no way uh, around that really okay i can take here now mm, i can take f we can take with the f pawn of course and not even not not just can he must take with the f pawn f pawn and queen c4 yeah okay this is of course better for white but how much better is it Hmm. Always tough this decision. Should you take here, or is this selling off uh, for too little? Not easy. What if I take there and play queen h five, intending queen to e five? And, and attacking a5 okay let's do that I'm not I'm not really sure maybe Bishop e6 is just terrible positionally but it um, it felt interesting if he takes on d2 now plays rook d8 I can take on a5 this is uh, important and the idea the general idea is to yeah rook d8 there's queen a5 this uh, this can be easily missed because it's such a long queen move but before I do that, let me quickly check. Uh, no, I think I can really just take it. Those long queen moves can be very easily missed. So I've won a pawn, which is very, very nice. Is it winning though? Hmm. Is it winning? to play it going to c4 that would be very nice maybe like that and then queen c4 covering here from the side and preparing to to gain uh, gain space i can also go to f5 now this is also a good square uh, this all these kind of moves it's also quite nice If I go here and then queen e3 to g5, this should be a very nice position for the queen. 
black can never trade and um, this should be a big problem maybe he needs to do something like queen b4 trying to get some activity going okay uh, this is actually similar if i go here queen d4 Hmm. I can go here though. This is quite interesting. Attacking b7 with a check. So we cannot really. I think he must go back now to d7 or e7. Exactly. And now he's somewhat tied down. Maybe this even, queen c5 coming. Yeah, queen c5, and he cannot ever take it. And uh, Okay, he cannot go here as this falls with check. So I can even improve a bit further here on the queen side. this if I go here how does he actually <clears throat> after the capture queen takes how does he protect the b pawn and the ah okay that, that was actually not good I can give the check here by the way check yeah I can give the check uh, I think I can trade really a b he can he can go there but I have a quick f5 I have a quick f5 yeah this, this is a win mm. the f the f pawn is winning now isn't it don't tell me this is not winning eh? this would be strange <laughs> okay, I can even go G four here, but right? well, it's not necessary, not really. I think this is the easiest. He's running out of moves now. Um, F6. Yeah, it's just... Check. Black resigns. Yeah, it, he just blundered the A pawn. I mean, there was always some some pressure on Black's position, but. Yeah, very crucial point here. I'm, I'm not sure if I should take really. It's it's of course a trade off in in the in the, in the purest sense of the word because while well, my bishop the bishop is stronger than the knight that that's clear. But should I take it anyway? Here there is maybe a spot where it makes sense because his pawn structure is severely compromised. Queen c4 was the alternative, but I like this idea, getting the queen here, and it set, it set this little trap which he fell right into. It can really easily happen that you overlook those long queen moves. And um, yeah, this is probably uh, winning this endgame. It's, it's just very um, uncomfortable for black. Check. Yeah, Queen E7 is, is losing. So, Check. but there really was no big alternative. If you if you go somewhere here, I don't know. I just take here. Cannot, cannot, uh, cannot, cannot hold this really. Check. Yeah, and here this was the winning king and pawn and game in in various ways. Yeah, interesting. So, 
he um, absolutely must avoid to uh, to blunder to blunder the pawn. E five is maybe a move. What about Queen F five here, intending Rook F eight and Queen here, maybe this Queen F six. Huh? Or queen here, yeah. Of course, the computer is an excellent defender in this in this position. Yeah, well, white has two pawn islands, black has three. It is a very slight edge for white. Maybe not um, something that should often win, but um, it is is a slight pull, pr pretty much clear. Of course, okay. The the pawn blunder is probably losing, so he really needed to play a five. Uh, e5, sorry. It's also a very logical move, blocking the queen on the fifth. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.